Hi friends, thanks for joining us back in the shop today. Today what we're going to be working on is another error code, another check engine light in the, the 2010 Forester. This is for misfires. This is 301 and 302, which indicates that Hoshi has been telling me she's misfiring on cylinders 1 and 2. Now, she runs fine. There's absolutely nothing wrong with the car that I can figure out. So at this point, it's just a matter of chasing down components that I haven't already replaced and try to keep that code from coming back. So what we'll be doing today is a very cheap, quick, diagnosis to figure out if we can clear that code and that is cleaning our EGR valve. Now what that stands for is that's our exhaust gas return valve. What that does is it pulls exhaust out from the, you know, the bottom of the engine and recycles it back into the air intake. Typically this valve will be open anytime that you're idling or there's really not a whole lot of load on the engine. Given when she's been throwing this code and when she's been having a little bit of issues, I think this is a good place to start, especially since the only cost to me is a little bit of time, some sea foam, and a $13 gasket. At this point, uh, it's really easy. It's right on top of the engine on the back here. So it's a clip and two bolts. We'll see if that takes care of it. So. First step first is to unplug it from the wiring harness, which is really easy. Just press on the tab and pull the plug out. I like to use a screwdriver because uh, nobody likes to break a nail. If I can get it out. <laughs> That's what he said. Enough with the peanut gallery. All right, being a lady, I'm gonna pull out the big guns and grab some pliers. The trick is to press down and pull at the same time and given where this is, I don't have a whole lot of room to work with. There we go. Now that it's unplugged, you can see it's got a nice heavy duty plug there. Now that this is unplugged, we can actually unbolt it from the bottom here. There's two bolts that hold it into the intake manifold. And that is going to be a 12 millimeter. You can see that once you break the torque, this should come free, come free pretty quickly. Looks like the only rusted part on my Forester. That's because I think it is at this point. <laughs> it has 195,000 miles on this original part. So you can see here's that gasket and our bolts. And this is what we'll be cleaning it today. So what we're gonna try with cleaning is we're just gonna pour in some sea foam into this EGR, let it sit for about 20, 30 minutes, and then come out and clean it out with some carb cleaner and see what we were dealing with. For me, this is an experiment. I don't know if this is gonna work. I don't know if this is gonna help, but at this point, it can't hurt. Now when you're doing this, make sure you steer clear of the electronics. And now that I've got it in there, I'm just gonna set it aside and let that sea foam chug away at that carbon. All right, we'll check back in in 20, 30 minutes. And we're back. So we've let this soak for about you know 20 30 minutes I'm just gonna dump out whatever sea foam was in there and just looking at it visually I can see a slight improvement on the internals what we're gonna do now is we're gonna soak it in uh, 
carburetor cleaner and this is really mostly just to rinse out any of that sea foam so we don't run into engine issues. And at this point, uh, things are gonna air dry while I prep everything else. So we're just gonna reinstall it, start her up and see what happens. All right, so when we put our part back on, it's always important that anytime that you're pulling pieces off and putting them back on, if there is a gasket, go ahead and replace it. So just looking at the difference between the new one and original, now, both of these came from Subaru. Obviously, the original one came from the manufacturing when the intake was built. And this is the one that I just picked up for $13. It, I did get it from the dealership. Uh, I highly recommend OEM parts when you can. Uh, there are some corners you can cut, but in gaskets, it's not worth it. Go ahead and get OEM. All right, and installation's just the reverse. hard lesson I've learned is always torque your bolts. These are going to get torqued down to 19 foot-pounds. All right, now that we're all torqued down, it's just plug and play. All right, our parts reinstalled, it's clean. Our engine bay is cleaned up. Now all that's left to do is start it up and let it run for a little bit. The check engine light's not gonna turn off magically by this. I know it. What I'll end up doing is resetting that check engine light, letting the car relearn idle, and then we'll just see how long it takes before that engine code comes back, if it does. Hopefully it doesn't. We'll check back in with you later. Thanks for joining us. Friends, thanks for joining us back in the shop today. So today we're going to be chasing down another code in the 2010 Forester, the dreaded P03012. <laughs> Hi friends, thanks for joining me back in the shop. So today we're going to be dreading...